Fresh off my trip from Canada, I'm back in the US. We are gonna be jumping right into it today. We're gonna check out the Atlantic Ocean and look at our next possible tropical feature, as you can see. And what are we looking at here at La Palma? What seemingly looks like a grid path of earthquakes in perfect symmetrical order. There's gotta be some sort of explanation to this. We're gonna figure it out. Not only that, but the earthquakes are seemingly starting to pull backwards towards other parts of the Canary Islands. We all know the main boots on the ground channel to go to is Bushcraft Bear for all the La Palma info incredible channel highly recommended and we are finally saying goodbye to hurricane sam whipping up towards the northern atlantic today and it may not just be the southeast that's looking for tropical activity i appreciate each and every one of you for being here we're gonna break it all down right here right now here we go <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. October 5th, 2021, 10.01 a.m. Great to be back. We're going to dive right into the Atlantic Ocean and then the west coast of Africa for La Palma. It is seemingly every day now that we're hearing info out of the Canary Islands and specifically the La Palma volcano. A few weeks ago, people were saying this volcano would erupt and then just go back dormant for another 100 years, and that does not seem to be the case. We're going to get into that and some weird earthquake patterns, but first, I just want to talk to you quickly about the area near the Bahamas and eastern Florida, the southeast of the United States, we are looking at a disturbance, 10% chance of cyclone formation over the next five days. Nothing too serious as of yet. Since Hurricane Sam, things have been fairly quiet, but we are expecting some flare-ups in the southeast, and you're looking at the Navgem version, putting an invest slash tropical depression or storm off the west coast of Africa. You can see here the deep isobar of the Bermuda Atlantic bubble, keeping that right along the warm water belt that we talk about, the west coast storms that come from Africa, come down the Cape Verde Islands and travel along basically just above the equator in the warmest of the water that crosses the Atlantic towards the U.S. And we're going to have to keep an eye on this area near the Leeward and Lesser Antilles Islands. As we've talked about before, moving into October changes a lot of things for hurricane season. You can see here in the September chart, a lot of the color coming from the western coast of Africa. That is normal peak hurricane season. As we move into October, we start to see many of our storms forming closer to home, down in the Caribbean, and then moving up towards the Gulf or up the Northeast. That's the situation we're kind of in now. But with that said, and certainly not surprising we see that west coast of africa flow coming but that doesn't always mean that's exactly what happens as you're seeing with your own eyes another west coast of africa forming storm and the potential for this to be another long-term storm like we saw with larry and we just said goodbye to sam it seems the theme of this season were these long drawn out storms from the western coast of africa putting the u.s and parts of canada in the crosshairs but taking very very long to do so as we begin that transition into deep fall from the summer we're going to start seeing these changes very drastically and much of our weather is going to be highlighted from the jet stream west to east and then the flow of tropical activity will come from the actual tropics. We also need to understand that just because peak hurricane season has come and gone and we are going down the backside of this mountain here, we had some very significant storms between the dates of August and September. So climbing up the mountain, we had some very significant activity and going back down is certainly very possible itself. In fact, we have some little peaks that pop up during the weeks of later October and early Early November as we move into the official end of hurricane season that does not always mean that hurricanes stop in fact I'm working on a video for late season hurricanes in history which is gonna be really cool because some of the biggest storms we've seen have come around this time all right with that said we're gonna move on to La Palma and try to make some sense of what we're seeing in this chart right here now I don't want to pretend to know exactly what this is I have seen something similar to it before sent to me by my buddy Chris but what's interesting is each one of these earthquakes that seems to be in a grid formation has an actual value, also a magnitude and a depth. So take a look at this. We're going to zoom into this area. We can really see the grid already. Now this may be some sort of map option. I can't see any settings to alter it, but each one of these quakes has a double quake involved with it and a separate set of data. As you can see here, this is a 2.9, which took place on the 4th at 2.24. UTC time 11 kilometers in depth if we move to the one right to the left of it and click that this was a 2.3 earthquake on the third at 1742 UTC if we go to the next one to the left we're looking at a 2.8 on the third now let's go to the next level of these quakes click one of these little ones here this took place on the fourth which was yesterday with another time and date and depth 16 kilometers and if we move across that row as well we could see each one of these some of them growing in magnitude 3.1 just yesterday 
okay? All have separate data to read. We can even click this line of quakes going down south of the island. 2.6 yesterday, a 2.9 yesterday, and also a 2.5 yesterday. Clearly there are many, many more quakes to talk about, but the fact that we're seeing this weird looking grid here, and if these quakes are actually happening in equally spaced intervals of time and actual space on the island itself. I know by this point, many of you are used to seeing the live pictures of the lava and the mountains starting to crumble and stuff like that. And yes, I'll definitely show you guys that stuff, but I also believe it's really important to understand the different quakes going around the area. We are now seeing activity in different parts of the Canary Islands. Not that that's super uncommon, but it does raise concerns about almost a reverse domino effect affecting the other island chains, which do have volcanoes on them. It's not just the main island here that has all the volcanoes of the Canary Islands. We are now looking at VolcanoDiscovery.com, a separate website than what I just showed you at, at the CSEM website. And I just want to give you two different perspectives of the seismic activity that's taking place. So as of now, nine hours ago, 3.9 earthquake took place, which is very, very significant, especially when there's an active volcano releasing pressure as well. 22 hours ago, which means we had a 3.7. We can move across this little area here. 13 minutes ago, a 3.8. That is big. 17 hours ago, 3.7. And four hours ago, a 3.6. Bottom line is this island right here is not slowing down. It is getting more and more active each and every day. This view you're looking at right here is the collecting lava flow hitting the sea off the coast of that island. This is causing many issues around the ocean. Many other channels are very good at detailing this information. In fact, one of those channels that I've talked about in the previous video is covering this as boots on the ground. He's literally on the island covering this and is doing an amazing job keeping people informed. That is Bushcraft Bear. You can see his channel right here. I'll link it again down in the description description box. And of course, my buddy, the real BP Earthwatch, has been covering this extensively, especially the lava flow hitting the sea. This is becoming a very big issue, not just for private investigators like myself, but also scientists that study the ocean and the effects of these things happening in the ocean and what it could mean for the United States, let's say. I believe it's extremely important to know exactly what's going on, especially if this could potentially have effect on the U.S. itself. Right here, you're looking at a satellite view of the area. You can still see the smoke and the heat signature coming off that island itself. And if I'm not mistaken, you can almost see heat signatures popping up on some of the other islands here. That could be just a graph effect, but certainly the La Palma area you could see from space and the satellites. Very, very interesting. I want to thank you all for the well wishes and all those comments you guys left while I was away. I had a great trip. I will explain the trip and talk about that in a future video. I wanted to get you the most updated information on what's been going on over the last couple days. Shout out to Canada as always. You guys are awesome. Any questions or concerns, please leave down below and I will talk to you all very, very soon. Take care. Care. Bye bye. Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.